Thanks for stopping by. One idea ahead here, we're going to give you the most extensive test YouTube has to offer. I have all my water containers that I would take on any trek for outdoors, and I wanted to see how they perform in the freezing weather. So we have them out here in the snow. It's going to get pretty cold out tonight, so hopefully we'll be able to tell if they're going to fail. It's better they fail here in my backyard than when we're out on the trail, and then the next morning when it warms up, all our water's gone. So. I'm going to go one by one, give you an idea of what we're going to be testing here, so stick with me. First up, we have the Gatorade bottle. It is 500 milliliters, or 16.94 ounces with the orange. And in case you think the orange is something special in it, we got the blue one too. So, we'll test those freezing capabilities. Next, we have the military canteens. We have two of them. One is a knockoff. This is a cheap knockoff. Um, but in case that's what you have, you can figure out if it works, because I think roughly the same. This, I believe, to be military issues. It was made in USA on top. It has the date and the sort or cage code on the bottom. I still don't know if that's the original issue, but as close as I can get to it. Next, we have a glass container. This used to be a, I believe, a pomegranate concentrate. So the one I want to test about is fairly large. You can boil in glass, so that's why I brought it out here. If you have a survival, you know, urban survival kit or whatnot, this is a cheap brand of plastic bottle you might find a bicycle to use because it has this lip here that hooks into those little, little. Um, Cages. All right, for all you ultralight hikers out there, we have a plastic water bottle, and this one is 50% less plastic. Well, less plastic than what? I'm not sure, but if any of your plastic bottles are going to freeze, this is probably going to be the one to do. It is extremely thin, and we're going to see how that does in the in the freeze test out here today. All right, moving on. Okay, for our metal containers, we have two for our testing today. One is a Tech Sport I picked up at. Dunham's for $6.99 and then also we have a Embark which I picked up at Target. Now to all you SIG fans out there with your SIG water bottles these will probably be a good representation I know they're not the same but they have very, I picked them both for their strong sidewalls and I know a lot out there are really cheap and you can bend them in but these are, these are at least in my opinion quality while yes I only spent $5 on this and you know $7 they're still, to me, reliable enough to, to withstand boiling if I needed to and everything you'd want a mandel canteen for. Nestled in the back, we have a one liter platypus collapsible water bottle. And this is nice because it has the, let's see if you can see it, the, the little hook here. So you can hook it with a carabiner if you had one. And when you're done, it folds up and it's lightweight. So that's a really handy thing to have as a backup water storage container. Next we have a Camelback. It's from about 2002, so it's a little bit old. It actually has seen freezing weather, and I know it will pass, but it's here for the test nonetheless. Then we have a Platypus of the same size. Both are filled up, water in the hoses, so we get to check their nozzles and so on. All right, let's keep going. Now let's say we're out plop camping or, or we're car camping, whatever you want to call it, and you want to bring a large water container because weight's not an issue. You just set it up. Here we have a five-gallon jug. It's built by Reliance. You usually pick these up around Walmart. Uh, I forget the cost. Usually it's under about ten dollars, I'd imagine. And what's nice about this is we can test a large body because this plastic is fairly rigid, even though it's collapsible. You notice I actually had a, a crease here that ripped. So you know you want to check it. At least I'm glad I pulled it out and did this test because now I know it leaks and have to get a new one. But in the meantime, this will hold enough water to freeze. For all you survival junkies out there with all your survival tins, it's a good thing to test your equipment. So what I have here is a turkey bag filled with as much water as I can. I know it's laying on its side, but that's probably how it's going to be set up if you did have water storage and you, you have to set it down for a little bit. What I want to do here is test its freezing capabilities. I actually think it will fail, but we're going to go ahead and test it anyways and see how, how it does. Alright, I saved the best for last. All you Nalgene fans out there, if you have a UVPE, which is the lightened version of the Nalgene, you'll want to see how this tests. This is basically a lighter weight. It might not be as indestructible, but it's still extremely sturdy. And we're going to test that out. We also have a brand new, from REI, in case that branding makes a difference, which it doesn't, BPA-free Nalgene bottle. So we're going to test that. And for all you old schools out there, we have an old polycarbonate that does have BPA. We're going to test that out. Two more older polycarbonate Nalgene bottles. This one has a, a narrow neck top. Um, now was I think they're going to perform the same as the old ones. I understand they're different plastics, but they still operate under the same conditions and they have this, about the same rigidity. 
so we're going to test them out. And finally, we have a Coleman brand. This is from about 2000, 1999, somewhere in there. It's also polycarbonate, cancer causing, if you will. But if that's all you have, we drank out of them at one point in our lives. All right, we're back out here again with the freeze test. Now, there's, there's something weird going on. This is the third night I've had these containers outside, and it's been below freeze, well below freezing all three nights. It does warm up during the day. You can see the snow melted. But everything to the left, right down the middle here, did not freeze. Everything to the right did freeze. And what blows my mind is they are the same type of containers. They have a military canteen here, military canteen there, but one fro or one froze, one didn't. You know, analogy, or, it just doesn't make sense. I am baffled. I almost forgot to explain for all you survival gurus out there. I took a condom and put it inside my handkerchief so it wouldn't puncture on this, this grass here. And it did not freeze. So maybe it's an advantage over the plastic bag. But then again, I've had, you know, an algae in container not freeze at all and then one freeze completely up or side by side so you know it beats me as far as why that happened okay what we're going to do since it's failing outside even though it's getting 10 degrees past you know freezing at night these things still won't freeze so i'm going to have to do is put them one by one in the freezer and we'll go from there okay for further inspection when i was bringing these inside i noticed that and i mentioned it outside the back side of this was not melted and this was actually the side that was right up against the ground and I noticed as well, both the Camelback and the Platypus water bladders, just the last like half an inch is not frozen. And you can see right about there is where the ice begins. So apparently if you leave it up against the ground, it, it doesn't want to freeze. Now maybe if you dug a little hole, you'd prevent your container from freezing altogether. First we have the older polycarbonate, and you can actually hear the ice. But um, what we have on the bottom, it doesn't bulge out on the bottom, but the overall diameter might be just ever so slightly larger. I mean, just marginally larger. So the lid, actually, if you can notice, it is bulging out on the top just a little bit because I could fill this up as much as I could. You can see it actually did bulge out the top a little bit because ice expands and it freezes. And we're starting to melt the outside here, so that's why I hear some crackling. But overall, the lid stayed together. And I'll give this one a pass. We'll just make sure there were no leaks when I seal it back up again. That's extra water that's coming out. This is the UVPE Nalgene bottle. It's the lighter duty version of the Nalgene. It's the newer one, so it's still BPA free. And I don't know if you can see it, but on the bottom here, I'll try to line it up there. It actually bulged out on this side. There is a bulge here, so if you laid it flat, it's not my kitchen here. It actually does lean a little bit. So, as far as the container goes, uh, it's still, it doesn't look to be bulging out other than the bottom, so I think that's where it gave out. There's the extra ice that formed on top, and the lid was good to go, no bulging there either. Next we have the Chinese knockoff military canteen. Um, this might be what you ended up if you thought you were getting one, but it was, it was not. Mine says, R and, well, it doesn't really matter, but basically, it bulged out in the center here. It, it got larger here, but the edges, everything else stayed the same. The bottom did not bulge out. Cat's still good. We'll take a look at that. We have ice in there. There's no more water. There you go. We had one little drop. So, actually, I was surprised that this actually passed too. I thought the lid might snap on the top here, but the cap still looks good. On to the bicyclist water bottle because it has this little clip here to mount on your bicycle frame and we do have some bulging on the bottom at various places I don't know how well you can see that it's almost like a crown how you have those indentations there and the bottle down here also expanded in the diameter and then it gets narrower up top it's still solid there's no crack okay freeze report this just came out of the freezer and as you can see it is completely bulged over and you compare it to how it has an indent that thing is frozen solid so we're going to see you know it flexed out pretty well we're going to see what it, you know it should be able to retain water I don't see any crease marks so so far so good this, this is an old polycarbonate style look at that bottom 
It has been bulged out. It won't even stand up. Well, it's definitely rocking. That has completely expanded past its limitations. Um, it hasn't cracked, but we'll see how it is when it warms back up. Next we have the Coleman, the old polycarbonate again. Uh, this one's hardly bulged out at all, so that one's actually doing pretty good. For all you ultralight backpackers out there, here's a, uh, you know, as thin as the water bottles as I could find, and obviously you can just throw these in the freezer, and I'm sure you, you know how this turned out, so that's so far so good. This is the one liter platypus. Um, I was thinking it was, it was going to expand beyond the limits here and, and crack and split the seams, but so far it's been holding up. Um, I don't see any any problems with it. So, all right, this is why I carry these harder now jeans. This is a newer one, the BPA free. I uh, doubt you can see that, but the bottom is just ever so slightly bulged out um, on on the bottom. And you can see that's just a solid block of ice right now. And the captain wasn't stressed out or anything. It, it just flexed somehow. But I know this will pass, um, so I'll give it flying colors right now. We'll, we'll let it thaw out and check it one more time. Complete double failures on the metal canteens. Um, now, if you're like a SIG bottle owner, maybe you can tell me it does differently, but I, I don't see how. Um, when you have a solid container and water freezes inside it, I don't care what you have. When that metal, you know, when that freezes, something needs to give. So in this one, this is a Embark, and you can see the cap completely got pushed out. The bottom bulged out. The paint came off. Now this Tech Sport failed miserably. That crack, as soon as it starts melting, water's going to start pouring out of there. So that's complete and utter fail. Uh, the lid stayed on, but it gave away down here so I guess in essence this one I could still boil water in and I just have to make do with wood maybe it'll go back on we'll see when it when it melts man this is cold as ow it hurts to hold it just to touch it's so cold but that bottom definitely gave away alright I knew this would happen I just wanted to prove a point this is the glass container and it definitely shattered under the pressure of the freezing ice once, yeah, I'll I'll let you know if it holds water, but I, I when it melts back, we'll see. But the lid stayed on, no problems there. But that that crack there is going to be the problem. Now that's what a frozen condom full of water looks like. That's just one big block of ice. I mean, I guess nothing's nothing's punctured. You see right here, have some actually really sharp edges from where. There's just a little bit of water, so maybe, maybe, well, I'm trying to make a rip here and it's not, so this is definitely a pass for a survival situation. I would definitely be able to depend on this with my life containing this water in a freezing environment. Now, how, how you melt it, get it back to, you know, drinkable, that's another story. Okay, take back everything I just said about that. As I was setting this in to thaw out, the condom ripped on that edge I was talking about, and I was trying to be as delicate as I could. Now it's just a block of ice. Isn't that, isn't that funny looking? So there's kind of like a cavity in here where there's just a little bit of water. And like it, these sharp edges caused it to basically puncture. Now that also happened with the plastic turkey bags. So maybe you just want to consider how to store it. Finally, our five gallon chunk of ice. I mean, that thing is frozen solid with the exception of maybe just a little bit of water that's, that's a that's a hunk of ice so now trick would be melting it all but as far as holding up to it I think we're good you know even that leaked it that gorilla tape actually did pretty good sealing up for the time being so I'll give it a pass as well we had one more don't forget we well, had two more actually the Gatorade bottles the orange and the blue they did do the same thing. Uh, they actually took longer to freeze because of all the stuff they put inside there to rehydrate you with. And I drank it. It was good. And my roommate threw out the bottles. But, however, I do know that they will pass because I've frozen Gatorade bottles many times before. All different sizes too, so those weren't, doesn't matter just that size. Okay, so, let's review the gameplay. I just watched like 15 minutes of video. What do I want to do with all this information? Okay, here's what you're going to do. You now know what worked and didn't work. 
So when you're out purchasing water bottles for out camping and hiking, keep in the back of your mind, okay, if I actually do go out and purchase these things, what kind of conditions I'm going to be using it in, and will they be able to handle them, you know, basically year round when your when your water is going to freeze. Um, Hopefully I presented it. I mean, I, I know it's extremely boring at times, but I need to get that information out because some people maybe don't have access to it or um, don't have room in the freezer. Who knows? So let's review this one more time. What we have is the Gatorade bottles. Pass. This is no particular order, by the way. The cheap GI water bottle. Passed. The real GI water bottle. Passed. Glass bottle fail. Uh, the thin neck Nalgene bottle, the old style, they did pass. The cheap bicycle bottle, passed. Old PVC style Nalgene bottle, passed. Give them two thumbs up, of course. The new Nalgene style bottle, which is BPA free, of course it was a pass, no doubt there. The UVPE Nalgene bottle, it's the thin Nalgene bottle, passed. The Coleman bottle from ages ago also passed. The very thin water bottle, which is pretty much just generic for whatever you want to have a plastic water bottle as, passed. We have the Tech Sport Metal Canteen, utter failure. Two thumbs down. Can't do that. The Embark bottom did bulge out and the lid did pop off. However, I have been able to reattach the lid. It works fine. Uh, the bottom doesn't leak. Granted, now you can't stand it upright, but you can, like I said earlier, you can still boil water in it. So I will basically leave it at that. No pass, no fail. Um, take with it what you will. Alright, the platypus collapsible water bottle with a spout on it. That pass. The camelback with the, the hose definitely passed. Now, the platypus bladder, it held water, but over time where the, the, the threads screwed in, I noticed there was leaking. I put it in a day pack and I went out hiking and about two hours later, half my water just kind of got into the pack and it was cold out, so I wasn't too happy about that. So, initially it seemed like it held water, but I believe it had a slow, slow leak and I did check to make sure I had it on tight. So that, I will have to give it the fail. Uh, I didn't want to do that, um, but it did fail on me. So we showed the condom failing. And I, I'm not sure if you caught it, the turkey bag idea. Failed as well. I actually did uh, that several times. I had three different turkey bags and two different condoms as well. They all did the same thing. They withstood the freezing, but when it came time to thawing it back, the sharp edges that create when it's freezing, regardless how it's oriented, it's gonna happen. It's just gonna puncture it. I mean, as best you can do, try to keep that some stuff from freezing. If you're in a survival situation, keep that losing from that water. Um, and then, of course, that big five gallon Reliance water jug definitely passed. Alright, well, I hope you found this informative. Go out there and experience this stuff yourself. Thank you so much for watching. If you have comments about any other water containers you've had, if it freezes and you've passed it, go ahead, leave a comment down below, help these people out, because uh, we're all here trying to you know, encourage each other to give good as good information as we can. Alright, well thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next time.